This changes everything for AI developers. You can now run GPT quality AI models with no running costs, no API fees, completely for free on your own machine. Meaning that this also jumps over one of the biggest hurdles that was previously in place with AI models like OpenAI. You now have full control and privacy over this model as well, the data going in and the data coming out. You can get lightning fast responses if you can run it on big enough hardware like GPUs without any of the downtime and troubles that come from using the public APIs. And you can serve and host it yourself. My name is Aaron. I have over a decade of experience in AI and full stack development, and I've worked on over a hundred different projects all focused around AI into production. And today we're going to be talking about the open source, open weights, GPT OSS model. But why is this such a big deal? OpenAI was named OpenAI because their intention was to create open source, openly available AI. They wanted to make AI open for everybody. And in the early stages, they did release a few open source models like Whisper, for example. But then ultimately, they decided to take a completely different path with only a handful of models really available for free. But thankfully, now they've gone back to their original mantra, which, to be honest, other foundational AI model providers like Llama and Mistral have been doing for a while. So I'm going to talk you through the two open weight models that they've just released. So they've released a 120 billion parameter model. So this is this GPT OSS 120B model. And they've also released a 20 billion parameter model. So naturally, because the 120 uh, model has six times the number of uh, parameters, the model is much larger. It has much more advanced capabilities in terms of tackling more complex tasks and requiring deeper context understanding. Um, whereas the 20 billion parameter model is very versatile. Uh, it's very good for lightweight sort of tasks and it's actually really good at running on devices on the edge as well. Whereas the 120 billion parameter model, this is more of a production ready, uh, robust model that you can use. So this website that I'm on right now is Hugging Face. If you don't know what Hugging Face is, then you should definitely get to know what Hugging Face is. In terms of the open source community, it is by far the most incredible community around. There are so many good AI resources on here. Any open weights models that you might want to leverage, so things like Llama, um, Mistral, or even fine-tuned models that people have created themselves, are all available through Hugging Face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a bit more of a look at the 20 billion parameter model. Now this is the uh, detail page. On here, there's full documentation of what this model is, um, you know, the use cases that you should use it for, any highlights that are important for you, to, for you to know. But then what's really nice about the Hugging Face documentation is that they give examples of, on how to actually use this model. What's really interesting here is that this new paradigm of models, these two open weights models that OpenAI have released, are using something called the Harmony Response Format, which I'll talk to a little bit more in just a moment. It's basically like a standardized way of providing messages to an AI model. So you can see here, it's actually really easy to get this up and running on your own machine. All you need to do is just install some packages and then you can just implement this very simple code block here to actually generate some output. Now a caveat, you will need specialized hardware to run this model. Even though it's a smaller model compared to the 120 billion parameter model, it's still a large model, it's still 20 billion parameters. So I would recommend trying this on a perhaps a virtual machine or a machine if you have a GPU, for example. And what's really nice is that the Hugging Face Transformers package actually makes it super easy to serve this model. So you can actually serve this in literally just one command here, and then you can start interacting with the model like an API. So now what I'd like to do very quickly is just talk about Harmony and this Harmony response format that I mentioned. So if I come over to Harmony, this is an article that was posted by OpenAI about the Harmony response format. Now, when you're using one of the open weights models, uh, so one of the GPT OSS models, if you're using it through a third party provider like Olama or another provider that's serving this model, you don't necessarily need to worry about what the Harmony response format is because the inference solution will manage all of that for you. However, if you're building your own inference solution, so if you're serving this model yourself, you need to structure the messages into a specific chat template format, which is the Harmony response format. And what's quite interesting is that they are using a specific uh, protocol. Now, if you're used to prompt engineering, you should be used to these, some of these different roles that you can assume whilst you're generating prompts. 
So there's five different roles that a prompt can now assume. You can be a system message. Previously, when you write system prompts, this usually includes information, um, for example, like context and instructions that you want to provide to the model. But now this system message is used to specify the reasoning efforts, other meta information like knowledge cutoff and built-in tools, which is quite interesting. So it looks like the purpose of these system messages has now changed in this harmony response format. And now the developer message is used to provide instructions to the model. So this is what would normally be considered a system prompt in other legacy models. So this is quite interesting. And then the user and assistant prompts uh, or roles, these are kind of as they were before. And then of course you have the tool role as well, which is really useful for models when you're when utilizing tool calls. And on top of that, what's quite interesting is the use of channels as well. So these channels essentially give the model an understanding of where does this information need to be surfaced? So the final channel is essentially a message that's intended to be shown to the end user. The analysis channel, these are messages that are used by the chain of thought, the internal chain of thought mechanism within the LLM. And the commentary, this is for function tool calls and will essentially give you a bit more context and a bit more information as to what's happening whilst the tool calls are going on. So it's almost like different messaging tunnels uh, based on who needs to know what. On this site, it also gives some documentation about the uh, Harmony Renderer library. If you want to um, render your messages in the right format and do some testing, so you can also make use of this as well. And it goes into a little bit more information about the actual uh, tokenization that's happening in the background. This is more useful if you actually wanted to build your own tokenizer or your own renderer, but for most people, this probably won't be necessary. So the last thing I want to show is an example of this actually running. On Hugging Face, they have this concept of spaces. And spaces is essentially an AI app directory. So you can create your own AI apps, you can deploy them completely for free, and you can make them available for anybody else to use. They could be Im image generation, video generation, speech synthesis, uh, OCR, chatbots. It's really quite incredible. And one of the spaces here is actually an early deployment of the GPT OSS 120 billion parameter model. Luckily, this is a large model, and so it's not running locally on our computer, but this is just a really simple sort of like GPT style chat interface that someone's created. And in the background, it's running on specialized GPU hardware, so that's perfect. So what we can do is we can actually test this out. So we can actually interact directly with this 120 billion parameter model that this person has deployed. So let's ask it a question. Let's say, uh, give me a summary of string theory in three key points. I mean, you can see how quickly this is coming back, which is pretty insane. So it's given me uh, an overall analysis of what I'm looking for. This might be one of the messaging channels that we spoke about, or it might actually sort of like be a bit of chain of thought here that it's providing. Um, and then it looks as though the actual response is these three bullet points here, which, yeah, I'm not an expert of string theory, but I'm going to assume that that's fairly accurate. Okay, let's write a follow up. So let's say, uh, Make it simpler for a 12 year old. Amazing. So you can see, you know, this is working very similarly to how you'd expect the open AI models to work. And from my research, from early benchmarking and from reports that have come out, the performance and the outputs of these GPT OSS models is comparable to the O3 and O4 line of models, in particular O3 mini and O4 mini. Now, I'm sure there'll be more research that comes out in terms of benchmarking and performance and all that sort of stuff. But if you need fast models, production ready models, and you want the control to be able to deploy it yourself on your own hardware, have control over the overall pipeline, the data, the privacy, this is an incredible option. And this is gonna open up a huge amount of potential for the future. Now that OpenAI, one of the biggest commercial AI companies in the world, has taken this step, I think that the ground is going to be made up even quicker now in terms of these open weights models, which for anyone working in AI is a brilliant thing. So you've now seen the brand new open weights GPT OSS models in action. This is truly a massive step forward for the AI world. Even though other providers have been doing this for a while, this now means that you can utilize open AI models with complete privacy and complete control over your stack. And best of all, because this is an open weights model, it means that you can fine tune this model yourself. You can actually retrain it using techniques such as LoRa or QLoRa, 
to then hyper-personalize these models to your specific use case. So if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to find out more about AI, why not check out some of my other videos? See you soon.